Our New Testament reading and the text for this morning's sermon is Matthew 1, verses 18 through 25. Now the birth of Jesus the Messiah took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be pregnant from the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to divorce her quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the virgin shall become pregnant and give birth to a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took her as his wife, but had no marital relations with her until she had given birth to a son. And Joseph named him Jesus. Each year since 1937, the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences, Sciences has given the Academy Award for Best Supporting Actor. It is given in honor of an actor who has delivered an outstanding performance in a supporting role while working within the film industry. Walter Brennan was the first winner of this award in 1937 for his role in Come and Get It. Since it began, this award for Best Supporting Actor has been given to 78 different actors. Besides Walter Brennan, who won the award three times, the list of honorees includes names such as Frank Sinatra in 1953, Walter Matthau in 1966, Robert De Niro, 1974, Denzel Washington, 1989, Robin Williams in 1997, and George Clooney in 2005. This list of names and the award itself suggests that the role that the supporting cast members play in the telling of the story is essential to its success. Our text this morning tells part of the drama of Christ's birth. The characters in this piece of the drama are Joseph and Jesus and Mary and the community of unnamed neighbors who might be prepared to believe the worst about Mary and an angel who appears in a dream sequence to provide divine guidance to Joseph. The lead actor, of course, in the drama of Jesus' miraculous birth is the Holy Spirit. Unlike the Gospel of Luke, which tells the Christmas story from Mary's perspective, Matthew's Gospel relates it from Joseph's perspective. He gives his narrative the Joseph vantage point. Joseph plays an all-important supporting role in Matthew's telling of this story. Matthew was writing for Jewish Christians in the first century, late in the first century AD, and he begins his gospel by grounding this Jesus story in the story of God's people Israel. In verse 1 he begins an account of the genealogy of Jesus, the Messiah, the son of David, the son of Abraham. And then there follows that section that we usually skip, that whole sequence of begats. And so in verse 17, Matthew sums up the begats by saying, So all the generations from Abraham to David are 14 generations, and from David to the deportation to Babylon, 14 generations, and from the deportation to Babylon to the Messiah, 14 generations. 
Matthew's story reminds us that we only really understand the life and ministry of Jesus within the history of God's work with Abraham and his descendants, the people of Israel. And there can be no room for anti-Semitism in the life of the Christian church. We shouldn't really need to point this out, except that there has been a disturbing rise in anti-Semitism, not only in our country, but around the world in recent years. Listen to verse 1 of Matthew's Gospel again. An account of the genealogy of Jesus the Messiah, the son of David, the son of Abraham. It's not too much to say that Christians may not kneel at the manger unless we are willing to stand with our Jewish neighbors. Our text also challenges us this morning to consider the important role that fathers may play in the growth and development of their children. In our country, Father's Day was not established until the 20th century. We observe the day on the third Sunday in June. But in some European societies, the observance of a Father's Day goes back to the Middle Ages and was celebrated in connection with the feast day of St. Joseph on March 19. Now we know that life is complicated and we cannot always attain the ideal. Some did not have a happy relationship with their father or perhaps with their mother. And many families are successfully headed by a single parent. But in recent decades, some have wondered aloud about the continued importance of the presence of a father in a child's life. Dr. Ditta Oliker has written about a positive reassessment of a father's role in the family. She wrote, there's no question that fathers do play an important part in their children's lives. The majority of studies affirm that an involved father can play a crucial role. Having a positive male role model helps an adolescent boy develop positive gender role characteristics. Adolescent girls are more likely to form positive opinions of men and are better able to relate to them when parented by an involved father. Experiencing validation of their importance in the general parenting literature has made fathers much more conscious of their value, which in turn leads to their greater desire to be involved. Matthew tells us about Joseph in the first two chapters of his gospel, and then we do not hear any more about Joseph. This has led some over the centuries to imagine that Joseph was much older than Mary when Jesus was born, but the scripture itself tells us nothing of this. In fact, at the time of our story, it was common in Jewish culture for the young women to become engaged in their early teens and young men in the late teens. We don't know how old Mary and Joseph were or how long Joseph contributed to Jesus' growth and development, but Matthew tells his readers that Joseph was a good or righteous man. Listen again to verses 18 and 19. This is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. His mother Mary was engaged to marry Joseph, but before they were married, she learned she was pregnant by the power of the Holy Spirit. Because Mary's husband Joseph was a good man, he did not want to disgrace her publicly, so he planned to divorce her secretly. Joseph was confronted with an unpleasant surprise. Before they had begun to live together, Mary was found to be pregnant. Mary and Joseph were in that year in between the betrothal and the moving in together as husband and wife when Joseph was confronted with this confusing situation. What should he do? His goodness is shown in that his understanding of what the Bible taught is conditioned by his heart of compassion towards Mary. 
We may hear an echo of Joseph, in fact, years later when Jesus declares to a group, the Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. The flesh and blood people in front of us must always condition our understanding of God's law in scripture. Matthew tells us that Joseph did not want to expose Mary to public disgrace. Of course, we know they did not have social media in those days, but the small town grapevine could be just as brutal once the word got out. Joseph wrestled with this difficult situation. Verse 20 tells us, while Joseph thought about these things, and the word that's translated thought there suggests reflection or pondering on a problem for which the answer may not come quickly. Our text questions us at this point this morning, when confronted with the demands of duty to God and a neighbor, how do we find the right path? Joseph must have decided to sleep on it. Matthew tells us an angel of the Lord came to him in a dream. What is the right thing to do in this circumstance? Sometimes talking it out with a sympathetic friend or loved one helps us to find the answer to life's difficult questions. But there are also those times when a good night's sleep can sort of open windows in the mind that allow an answer to emerge for us. And so in the night, while the external noises around him are quieted down, Joseph is led to understand that God's hand was in this situation. Matthew tells us the angel said, Joseph, descendant of David, don't be afraid to take Mary as your wife because the baby in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son and you will name him Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. Did you notice the heavenly messenger said to Joseph, don't be afraid. I wonder how often we fail to choose a good course of action because our minds and our hearts are clouded by fear. Scripture tells us that perfect love casts out fear. Joseph's love of Mary and love of God helped him to move past that fear. No matter what you are facing now at the end of 2023, you can let God's love grow in you until it squeezes out the fears that hold you back from making the right choices in your life. Matthew also tells us about two names that are given to the baby, one directly and the other indirectly. Verse 21 tells us, Mary will give birth to a son and you will name him Jesus because he will save his people from their sins the name Yeshua in Hebrew. The name Jesus means the Lord saves. And Matthew quotes a verse from Isaiah 7, and they will name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. In the very last verse of Matthew's gospel, the risen Christ promises his disciples, I will be with you always even until the end of the age. So the drama of salvation begins and ends with the promise of God's loving presence among us. And that is a promise to carry with us into 2024 and beyond. Amen.